excited. Uh, do do y'all hear me? I, I don't. Okay, you don't hear me. I'm excited about what God is is doing. Testing one, two. What about now? That's better. Okay, I had it on mute. That's my fault, Jane. Uh, but we praise God for what the we praise the Lord for what He is doing uh, in the various communities. We had a week off. Uh, and uh, I don't know about you guys, but in Berrien, I'm sorry, in Barrett Village, in Barrett Village, uh, we had some slow numbers, but it started to pick up towards the end. And uh, but we praise God for the people who came out and for the time that we had uh, in serving in the community on yesterday. And so today, as we continue uh, uh, our Operation Safe Space, we're going to get into a word today that is relevant. A word today that is relevant to the issue that we are seeking to address in our community. Uh, first, I want to uh, just recognize uh, we have a, a brand new pastor uh, at the Pine and Memorial Church. Pastor Shane and his wife uh, Darlene are here with us today. Can we give God a hearty amen? amen. And, uh, welcome. Uh, thank you so much for coming to uh, worship with us here on today. Uh, today, we're going to get into the word. And the word is found in the book of Genesis. What book did I say, everybody? Genesis. The book of Genesis. And we're looking at Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1 through 9. And the Bible says that Eve became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. Eve said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother, Abel. Now, Abel kept flocks and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, the Bible says, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with what everybody? Favor. He did not look with favor. So Cain was very what? Angry. He was very angry and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper. Am I my brother's keeper? Today, I want to speak to us on the subject. Why you mad, bro? Why you mad? Why you mad, bro? Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we are grateful and thankful for another opportunity to be in the house of God and to open the word of God and to see what God has to say. Father, it's my prayer that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight and encouraging to your people. This we pray in Jesus name. Let everybody who believes say amen. amen. And amen. Today I want to speak to you on why you mad, bro. Why you mad, bro? Listen, there is something that we have really just become uh, aware of during my research, I learned that uh, these things called uh, what are these things called on the screen? Emoji. Emojis, right? I learned that 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 emojis actually came out about twenty more than twenty years ago. Anybody know that? I thought it was recent. I thought that emojis came about when we started using them in our smartphones, right? How many of you guys type uh, or respond to people using emojis? You do that a lot, right? They become a form of communication, right? Maybe you don't want to say it in words, and so you use a what? Emoji. You use an emoji. So what we're going to do right quick is we're going to, we're going to play uh, a game called Name That Emoji. 
All right, name that emoji. I'm gonna put some emojis on the screen, and when you see the emoji, I want you to tell me what feeling, all right, this emoji is expressing. Is everybody ready? Yeah. All right, we wanna identify what feeling is this emoji expressing, all right? So here we go, here we go. The first one, what's that? I'm happy. I'm happy. And why do you say, why, why, why do you think it's saying it's happy? It's a smile. Something good. Something good happens, right? Good. Something good happens. So that's smiling, all right? And what about this one? Huh? Excited. Super happy. Good. What about this side? What you think? Huh? No, no, no. This is right here. What do you think? That, what, 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 what expression? What, what emotion is that? Is that communicating? Happy. Smiling. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Huh? Cheesy. Okay, cheesy. Okay, here's another one. Here's another one. What is this one? Embarrassed. Say it again. Say it again. Embarrassed. Shock. Scared. Shock. Uh-huh. I see your hand. Worry. Surprised. Shock. Okay, uh-huh. What you think? Shock, okay. All right, Whatever. However, however you identify, we good, okay? What about this one? Sad. 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 All right, you got, you got discouraged, you got sad, you got sleepy, disappointed, okay? Here's another one, here's another one. What about this one? Huh? Say what? All right, guys, one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. You said excited, okay, I need you to go have a seat, but. Say what now? You said cold, frightened. Cold, okay, what you think? Huh? Happy? Hot, okay, hot, all right? Yes, back there in the back. Huh? What you said? Cheese and smile, okay. I know what, I know what that's shot. All right, hold up, what about this one? Suspicious, huh? Confused. He's trying to do a math problem. He's trying to do a math problem. <laughs> he's trying to do a math problem. All right. He's trying to figure out. He's trying to figure out how he spent his money. All right. Uh huh. Thinking, thinking. Good, good. All right. Here's another one. Here's another one. What about this? One? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. All right, guys. All right. Listen, listen. Listen up. Listen up. Listen up. All right. Hey, as we do this now, I want, I want us to do this. All right. I want you to cooperate with me. All right. So when I ask you to calm down, son, I need you to calm down. Okay. What, uh, what are you saying? Mad. Sad. Angry. Angry. All right. All right. Good. Now, here's another one. Watch this one. All right. Yeah, that's anger. All right. That one represents anger. Now, I want, I, want, I want to say something about anger because this is something that we're going to talk about today. Uh, we're going to define what anger is. The first thing we need to understand is that anger is an emotion. Anger is what? Emotion. It's an emotion, all right? And we're going to look at, well, what is an emotion? Where well, it is on the screen. An emotion is a natural, instinctive state of mind coming from one's circumstances, mood, or relationships with others. In other words, what that means is this. That, that means that we as human beings, when God made us, he made us with the ability to have emotions. All right? We have feelings. Okay? And so sometimes our feelings will change based on circumstances, based on what somebody says to me. Anger. And we're going to help you do that today by the grace of God. The Bible says, look, everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to what? Slow to anger, for the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. When you are angry and you do something out of anger to somebody, that's not helping advance what God wants you to do with that person. The Bible says in Proverbs 29, verse 11, that a fool always loses his temper, but a wise man does what? Holds it back. Somebody get in your face and they start talking crazy to you. What does a wise man do? 
Oh, come on. The wise man does what? Oh, okay. You got the right answer. All right, here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. All right, hold on. We're going to pause real quick. You all right? You okay? Oh. No? All right, good, good, good. Okay? All right, we're focusing now, all right? Look, look, let's not, let's not, let's not uh, throw that ball. Now, here's one right here. You curse. You get so angry, you and you get so curse. mad, and you, you saying, curse words. You're saying curse words. You're saying curse words. You're saying bad words. Right? You're saying something that you regret. You're saying something that... Has anybody ever said something that got you in trouble? Raise your hand. You ever said something that got you in trouble? Come on, now, all you adults who are not raising your hand, you lying. You know you lying. I'm not, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't have to be a... You know, it doesn't have to be a curse word. Right? It doesn't have to be a bad word, but sometimes we can say things to our... Have you ever said something to your brother or your sister that hurt their feelings? Yes, <laughs> Yeah. So, so, so look, the Bible says that a gentle answer... What kind of answer? A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Don't you know that there have been so many fights that have taken place because somebody said something crazy to the other person? Because, because somebody said something, you somebody was already mad, and because they were already mad, and then you said something or, or the person said something else that stirred up their anger, and now you're fighting. Now, I'm going to have to separate y'all. I, I can do that. You want to do that? No? We can't do that. All right? I need you to pay attention. Are you with me? Because I got something at the end for you. You get a chance to win something. Pay attention. All right? All right, listen. So, so, so we've, got, we've got fights happening. We've got even, even professional basketball players and football players not learning how to control their anger has caused them to get into trouble and even lose money, millions of dollars, because they could not control their anger. And so the story that we just started out with in Genesis chapter 4 is a story of two brothers called Cain and Abel. Now, I, got some, I, I need some help here, uh, and so I'm going to call on my brother, Dark Shell, uh, to help me out. And uh, 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 E, come on, E, come on, man, help me out, man. I want to I wanna introduce you all uh, to these two brothers right here, okay? And these two brothers are Cain and Abel. <laughs> Cain and Abel right here, all right? Now, that, so this is Cain and Abel. The Bible says that Eve became pregnant. All right? Eve became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. Later she gave birth to his brother Abel. And here is the family right here. They started off as little, little babies. And then they grew up. And when they grew up, the Bible tells us that the brother, which one, which one you, you ate? <laughs> we got we got we got Abel and so we got the big brother who's Cain and the little brother who is Abel. And the Bible says that Abel kept flock, right? He worked with the sheep. He, you know, he 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 was a uh he had animals and he was kind of a shepherd type of person, right? He's working with the animals. Come on, work with the animals, man. You know, you're working with the animals, right? You work with the animals. All right, and then his big brother Cain, however, he worked as a gardener, right? He worked as a gardener and he was he was out there with the fruits and the vegetables and and, 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 you know, he's doing his thing as a gardener. And then guess what happened? The Bible says, in the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil. He brought some of the fruits of the soil, and he, he made his offering unto the Lord, right? As an offering to the Lord. And then the Bible says that, that uh, and Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flocks. And as they brought their offering, look at what the Bible says. That the Lord looks with favor. I need the Lord. Where the Lord at? I need the Lord. Come on back here, right, right, right here. Come on. Yeah, come on, bro. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So the Lord looked with favor 
He looked with favor. He looked with favor on Abel's offering. But the Bible says, watch this. The Bible says, look, that's a, that's a, a, a Abel making his offering right there. God sends fire down and, and accepts his offering, right? But on Cain and his offering. Oh, man. The Lord did not look with favor on his offering. How you think Cain feel? That ain't fair. Ooh, she said that ain't fair. Watch this. Watch this. You got to pay attention to the word. Watch this. The word going to tell you what's fair or not. Amen, somebody. Watch this. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. He's upset now. He's mad now. His look poking out. You know how you look sometimes when your mom tell you you can't do what you supposed to, what you want to do? Lips start hanging out. Head down. That's how he was looking. His, his face is downcast. And the Bible, and look, uh, first point that you get today. Anger shows up for the first time in the Bible right here. Between two brothers being mad at each other. Well, actually, one being mad at the other. First time it shows up. Anger is hard to hide because it shows up on your face. It's hard to hide when you really don't like a, a person. It's hard to hide because it shows up on your face. It's hard to be, uh, I ain't mad but you looking like this. <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with me. <laughs> it's hard to hide because it's on your face. Look at Abel. I mean, look at Cain. He's angry now. He's upset now. The Bible says, the Lord said to Cain, look, this is God, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. The Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? <laughs> like, why you mad? Ask, come on, why you mad, bro? Why you mad? <laughs> he wants to know why, 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 why you mad, bro? <laughs> this is what God is asking. I need you to understand something. The reason why God is asking this question is not because God doesn't know why he's mad. God understands why he's mad. God knows why he's mad. God wants to get him to understand why he's mad. And here's the reason why he is mad. He is mad because he is too busy comparing instead of obeying. <laughs> See, 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 he's too busy looking at what Cain is doing when he should be obeying what God already told him. Now, do you think that God told them what kind of offering to bring? Yes. Absolutely. God doesn't, God doesn't leave that up to guesswork. God doesn't want them to guess what he wants them to do. He doesn't want them to guess how to obey. Instead, God gives clear instructions, and with those instructions, God expects us to obey. Amen. Instead of obeying, he's comparing. Can I talk to somebody right now? I need you to understand that instead of you comparing yourself to other people, instead of you comparing your marriage to somebody else's marriage, comparing your shoes to somebody else's shoes, comparing your house to somebody else's house, comparing your clothes to somebody else's clothes, comparing your situation to somebody else's situation, if you would just obey and do what God has told you to do, you will be accepted by the Lord and looked upon with faith. Amen. So stop comparing yourself to your brother. Stop comparing your stuff to other people's stuff. Amen, somebody? Amen. Now, here's what happens. The Bible says, the Bible says, if you, God told him, look, if you do what is right, will you not be accepted? Doing the right thing keeps your heart clean and your face from looking mean. <laughs> when you are faithfully doing what God has told you to do, Cain, yeah. <laughs> your lip won't be poking out <laughs> when you see other people get blessed. Yes. Your heart will be cleaned. You'll be in right relationship with God. In fact, rather than you hating on your brother, come on, can, can, can you show some love to your brother? Rather than you hating on your brother, you'll have love for your brother. Well, watch this. Hear me now. Hear me now. Hear, uh, young people, I need you to get this. Because this is something that I see uh, in, in, in young children a lot. Young children, listen to me very carefully. This is an old problem too. Uh, but but, uh, but I, I need you to receive this right now. Listen. When something good happens, 
to one of your brothers or sisters or cousins or friends when something good happened, when they receive something that's good, rather than you being upset and mad that you don't get it or that you didn't get it, I want you to celebrate that. Yes. Can you be like, oh man, you just won $20, man. I'm, good job, I'm proud of you. I'm, so, I'm happy, I'm as happy for you. And try to do it without asking them for anything. <laughs> I, I, I want us to learn to celebrate each other. To be excited about the next person's success. Because somebody said, somebody said, that, that, that I don't get upset when God is blessing my neighbor. It just tells me that God is in my neighborhood. Amen. So my blessing is on his way. It's like the mailman. When I see the mailman, I'm expecting some mail. And I know I'm expecting a nice tax return. Amen, somebody. Now, I know y'all direct deposit and all that good stuff, but work with my illustration here. <laughs> I know the mailman is in the neighborhood when I see him at my neighbor's house. Yes. So my blessing is on, is on his way. Yes. God says, look, if you do what I if you do what is right, uh, but if you do not do what is right, appreciate that. Sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it, the Bible says. What does that mean? The Bible says, look, be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. In other words, what that means is, is that if you do not control the anger, if you do not allow God to help you control the anger, you give the devil a foothold. And that's all he needs. If you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. What's a foothold? See how the sister right there is in the door right there? Yeah. Keep, 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 just put your foot in the door for a real, a real quick, sister. Quick. Just a foothold. That's it. That's all the devil wants right there. Uh-huh. He don't want the whole door open. Just let me get my foot in right there, and I'm good. Stay angry. Yeah. Go to sleep mad with your husband. Stay angry. Go to sleep upset with your mama. Stay angry. Go to sleep. Because watch this. When you wake up the next day, guess what happens? That anger is still there, and it's growing a little bit. Yeah. And you just woke up in the morning and you mad. Yeah. Hey. It's a new day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. It's hard to rejoice in the Lord in the morning in the new day when you go to bed mad. The Bible is very practical. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Because you might, you're going to wake up the next morning if God will it. You wake up the next morning hard to rejoice. Yeah. Be angry, but do not sin. Don't let the devil get a foothold. The Bible says, look, now Cain said to his brother Abel, talk to him, Abel, talk to him, Cain. Let's go out to the field. Watch this. His anger has been festering so much. He's being deceptive in his words. Let's go out to the field. I got some work I need you to help me with. Let's go out to the field. The Bible says, while they were in the field, Cain did what, everybody? He attacked his brother Abel. Lord Jesus. The Bible says, listen up, listen up, the Bible says, while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Ooh, they killed his brother. Oh, oh. That's a girl. Listen up, watch this, guys. This started out, watch this, hear me now, hear me, hear me, hear me. It started out with him just being angry. He wasn't even angry at his brother. His anger should have been with himself. If he would have simply did what God told him to do and instructed him to do, then we wouldn't be in this situation. Come on, is that somebody's life right now? No. You came into the house of God today 
you came into this place today and, 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 and there's some anger that you might be holding in your heart. I don't know who you are, where you are, why you did it or whatever. But there may be some anger that you're holding in your heart and the anger is directed towards the wrong person. If you're going to be angry with anybody, if you're going to be upset with anybody, uh, look at the woman in the mirror or the man in the mirror. If you're going to be upset or angry with anybody, start with yourself. Why are you mad, bro? Come on, sister, why are you mad? That's a diagnostic question that God is asking to Cain, and he asked that same question to us today. Why are you mad? Are you mad because your children are no longer walking with the Lord? So you mad at them? Well, what did you do? Or what didn't you do? Are you mad that you are on the verge of divorce? Are you mad that you've already been divorced? Are you mad at the other person? At the end of the, at the, end of the day, the same diagnostic question that God asks uh, Cain is a question that we have to ask ourselves. Why, are, why, why do you feel that way? Why are you angry? It's a question for reflection. The Lord said to Cain, where is your brother? Uh, Abel, I don't know, he said. Now he's uh, rejecting responsibility, he says. Uh, he's, he's avoiding being held accountable for his actions. Am I my brother's keeper? Thank you, God. Can we give it up for Cain and Abel? So listen guys, here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do. As our musicians begin to play, I wanna I want you to think about this. I want you to think about this. I need you to receive this particular word right here. Receive this particular word right here. Uncontrolled anger puts you in danger of making harmful decisions. Your uncontrolled anger puts you in danger of making harmful decisions. Decisions that can alter the rest of your life. Don't you know that in the book Patriots and Prophets, it says that Cain is responsible for all of the evil that took place that led up to the flood. It didn't start, hear me guys, it didn't start in the field when he attacked his brother. It started the moment that he chose to make the kind of offering that he wanted to make rather than follow the instructions that God had given. And anytime you do the things that you want to do instead of doing what God wants you to do, you set yourself up to be angry. Because it doesn't work out the way you plan it when you don't do it according to God's plan. Uncontrolled anger puts you in danger of making harmful decisions. Don't you know that there are people who are behind bars right now? I told you guys before, I have a cousin. In fact, I got two cousins. One of them was serving a life, uh, uh, he was on death row because of a decision that he made out of anger. Another one got 20 years because of a decision he made out of anger. There are people who are languishing in prison because they made bad decisions while they were angry. Young people, I need you to understand something. Especially uh, my young boys, I need you to pay very close attention to me right now. I need you to hear what I'm telling you right now. It is crucial, it is important, it is very vital that right now at 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 years old, you learn to control your anger. Your anger. It's important that you learn to do that. And the reason why it's important is because the life that we live, the world that we live in is going to test you in so many ways. It's going to try to push you to be angry. Yeah. And when it does, all you got to do 
pull out your pizza. You got, you got your pizza? Anybody got your pizza? You got your pizza? You got your pizza? Put the pizza in your hand. Come on, put the pizza in your hand. Put your, put your pizza in your hand. You got, you, come on, put your pizza in your hand. All right? Yeah, all right. But, but, but we, we, we illustrate right now. You got your pizza? For those of you who don't know, for those of you who don't know, this is, what the, this is the, 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 the pizza exercise. The pizza exercise is you take some pizza. We, we did this out in the community yesterday where the kids got a chance to paint and draw some pizza. All right? You know how when you, when you see the pizza and it smells good? I don't know about y'all holy folk who don't eat pizza, but... <laughs> When you smell it, you breathe off. Oh. oh, man. Hallelujah for the vegan pepperoni. Praise God. Right? And then, and then, the breathe out, when you breathe out, right? You're breathing out, what are you doing? It's too hot. So you got to blow it a little bit. So, um, look, watch this, watch this. It seems like a silly, simple exercise, but guess what? It can save many of marriages. It seems like a simple, silly exercise, but guess what? It can prevent somebody from going to prison. So when we find ourselves angry, the least we can do is breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. Breathe out. And guess what? Breathing in and breathing out is also a form of prayer. You can sit in meditation and you, you breathe in. The, the Bible says that Jesus breathed on the disciples. He breathed the Holy Spirit on the disciples. And I want somebody today to understand that the same spirit that God breathed, that Jesus breathed on the disciples, he wants to breathe on you as well. And the Spirit of God can give you the power to have what it, start, what it describes as one of its fruits, self-control. Yes. Self-control enables you to overcome anger. Listen, the Bible says, the Bible says these words, ladies, I wanted, this is a word for the ladies right here. Do not associate with a man given to anger or go with a hot-tempered man. You might find yourself in a position that you wish you wouldn't in, you would, that you wish you were not in. Yeah. So don't associate with him. As handsome as he is, don't associate with him. As much as he can provide, don't associate, don't associate with him. As desperate as you are, as lonely as you are, don't associate with him. Sometimes that anger allows, uh, forces people, compels people to go pick up a gun. This is why we got the issue in our community this very day, because people not being able to control their anger. Anger is an emotion. Last one. Anger is an emotion that you can control with God's help. Amen. Come on, come, somebody say, it's possible. It's possible. Come on, it's possible. It's possible. For God, for God to help me. To help me. Control my anger. Control my anger. So this is what we're going to do right now. My appeal is real simple. In the house of God today, as the people of God, we're going to give our anger to God. Amen. I don't know why you're angry. I don't know why. See, see here, here's the thing, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm closing. Here's the thing. You see, anger, uh, it, it, it causes, it, you know, you, you get hurt and you get angry, or you get angry because you got hurt, same thing, right? And so what happens is, when we have these hurt feelings, and we don't know how to process, the, process these hurt feelings, then we can end up doing some things that can be harmful to ourselves or harmful to other people. And here's what I want you to understand. In, 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 uh, listen. in this life, you will get hurt. It's going to happen. Your feelings are going to get hurt. Somebody's going to say something to you that hurts your feelings. Circumstances are going to happen that brings pain. The beauty of it all, that we don't have to be swallowed by our anger. Because with God's help, we can control our anger. Who believes the word of God today? So here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. 
If you want to say, God, I need your help to control my anger. God, I need your spirit to give me self-control so that my anger does not control me. If that's your desire, to give God your anger, would you stand to your feet right now? Would you just stand up? Would you just stand up? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Come on, your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we are grateful and thankful for the Spirit of God giving us the power to control our anger. Lord, I believe that there's somebody in the house of God right now who is dealing with a particular hurt. Maybe it happened yesterday. Maybe it happened last week. Maybe it happened a year ago. Maybe it happened four years ago. Maybe it happened when they were a child. Lord, my prayer is that on this very day, the anger will be subdued. Lord, I pray that on this very day, that the anger that they have will be surrendered to you. Lord, bless us to give our anger to you. And Lord, as they do so, I pray that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, God, for what you have done and for what you will do in giving us the victory to control our anger. I pray all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Let everybody who believes that their anger has been given to God shout amen. 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 Listen, at this time, Shannon's going to come and is going to lead us in the next part of our service in time and offering.